That report sets the tone for our conversation this morning, and we have in the studio from the civil society organization, the chairman, Partners for Electoral Reforms, Ezenwa Nwagu. And it's a pleasure to have you join us here in Thank the studio. You. Good morning. Thank you. And we have Verzum from Lagos, a lawyer, Sam Kagbo. It's a pleasure to have you join us this morning, Sam. Yeah, thank you for having me this morning. Um, uh, well, it's great to have you join us this morning. And I will begin with you, um, given that you've been waiting for us for a while. You, we have heard, and I'm sure you have also read up on um, the, the public presentation of the bill, and especially the position canvassed by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, which seemed to argue that um, there is really no need to set up a new commission, uh, given that now the, the government is talking about harmonizing um, uh, existing agencies, you know, in order to shrink them, especially those ones with overlapping uh, responsibility. They seem to think that there are sufficient uh, uh, security agencies in the country that have the responsibility to take care of what this new commission um, is going to set up. There are also the school of thought uh, that uh, we are not considering the, the economic um, uh, the economic burden that this extra bureaucracy uh, will cause this country at a time when we are struggling uh, to pay salaries and to meet up with other fiscal responsibility. What is your take on the position of the EFCC? Well, I uh, let me <laughs> uh, let me just second guess them. Let me tell you my thoughts on the uh, matter. Um, I do not think that the Francis framework, if, we, if we've had looking at the positions, you, you would uh, say that it is not actually a seasonal thing that it is addressing. The offenses created by the present Electoral Act cover the uh, targeting uh, what I would call activities and actions that would impact negatively on the integrity of the election itself. Mind you, the integrity of the election is actually the foundation of our democratic process. So I do not really believe that, that we can spare, irrespective of the economic challenges, irrespective of whatever anybody think, but the creation of, uh, I think that's an aspect of our own, both political and economic, that see that seriously and do that which we ought to do in order to sanitize it. Okay. Um, the Tango. EFCC, its, its origin, sort of argument that, oh, that need to create a body Mr. Akago, we would have to come back to you once we are able to sort uh, what appears a technical problem with uh, the audio quality there. Uh, coming back to you in the studio, um, you have heard a bit of what um, uh, the barrister was trying to argue. Um, this whole effort at setting up a new commission to try crime, isn't this a mere duplication of function? Have we, can't we find within the existing frameworks, uh, a way of getting the police or the AFCC or the ICPC as the case may be, can't we find a way to retool or energize them to carry out the responsibility? Because we understand we have over 800,000 cases, uh, electoral cases, and, and that is quite overwhelming for INEC to deal with in addition to its responsibility of conducting a credible election. Thank you. Uh, so how did we get here? We got here because we got frustrated with the um, existing framework, framework paraphernalia of um, election security provisioning, if you like. Is that frustration that has driven the call coming from 2007, uh, when President Musa Yaradwa, you know, did say that the election that brought him to power was flawed, and then set up the Justice Ways um, Electoral Reform Commission, which then recommended 
that there is need to um, have a separate commission to deal with. Um, and, so, uh, and we did then call it unbundling INEC, taking certain responsibilities away from INEC so that INEC can face the core issues of um, election, conducting elections and, and the rest of it. So um, it's, it's clear, therefore, that when you say the tool, you know, we put in 21,000 policemen and women were on ground in Oshun. Before that, you, you've had situations where you had even 31,000, 17,000. And so if we talk about value for money, you then ask why it has been impossible to get even 20 prosecutions mm. as we speak. So that frustration is why what is driving this whole, you know, agitation for something uh, that an institution that would be separate. So even the FCC, the argument of the FCC is defeated by its own existence. Mm -hmm. Its own existence came as a result of also, otherwise the special fraud units of the Nigerian police is enough to take care of economic fr crimes. Mm -hmm. But because the challenge became huge and overwhelming, we had to create ICPC, create uh, EFCC, Tuga, NATI, all of these are dealing with, and that's what the Orosenye report is about now. Mm. How do you begin to make so that's So that's the thing. We have the Orosenye report on one hand saying that we need to, we need to harmonize these agencies. We need to cut down on uh, the, the, the civil services, actually bloated, over bloated, and we need to, we need to shrink it down. And, and now you're having a proposal that's going to create another agency that is going to still add to the bulkiness of what we're trying to cut down. So how do we balance So my, my honest view is that it's going to remove a body from INEC, clearly. That's what it would solve on the one hand. That's what it will solve on the one hand. Mm. But whether it will be able to address the bigger challenge of electoral integrity, mm. There has to be a lot of things that has to come to play. We, how have we been able to resolve the issue of cronism and patronage that dogs our public institutions? So are we going to have a situation in which we're going to have equal opportunity employment, for instance, where you will not have the same people creating this law, people in the agency, and creating an agency in their own image. Mm -hmm. Because the challenge of electoral perfidy and malfeasance is domiciled with the politicians. And the people creating this law for us are the real people who mm -hmm. ordinarily. But Nigerians listening to you from their houses would yeah. say, you, you are going to man that place with Nigerians anyway. No, that's what I'm telling you that I've told you about why we need it. Yes. Mm. There's a, there's a dis desirability of an electoral offenses commission mm -hmm. is, not, is not a conversation. Because the same Nigerians, our attitude to elections is to have dubious advantage at every point in time. And the people who, who in my view, are in the center of these conversations are the same people who are trying to create. So you are going to be talking about, if you, if you have, like I said, this number of security agents always thrown into an election and you don't have service delivery outcomes that match our expectations then creating one may just be a job for the boys interesting and that that for me is the challenge so i agree that we should create one i agree that there are issues around costs but i am thinking about the 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 how do we uh, the mechanics of it how do we deal with the issues for which we want to create it and ensure that we have service delivery outcomes. What kind of measures do we need to take? So listening to me, you already know I want it created, but I'm more concerned about outcomes, service delivery mm -hmm. outcomes. Otherwise, it's going to be a waste of time. Talking about outcomes, um, we saw with the recent um, electoral reforms and the introduction of the beavers, how that significantly impacted on electoral integrity process, especially with um, uh, prior to this time, the, the, the incidence of um, 
snatching of um, resorts, you know, between, between uh, the pooling areas and um, the commission. Don't you think that uh, technology, in a way, would have been able to serve this purpose? Uh, because in other climes, you don't have, like you have rightly observed, this amount of uh, state agents uh, participating in, a, in, in the electoral process that, at the end of the day, does not seem to give us uh, the outcomes, the desirable uh, service outcomes that we're looking for. What can we do? What changes do you think, in your opinion, uh, from coming from somebody who has followed the uh, electoral reforms, do you think we can put in place to, to reduce this as much as possible, mm -hmm. including and not limited to even the way we conduct election, the whole amount of money we spend trying to create a, a voter's register separate for an election as different from the identities you have for your driver's license or for the rest, as, as you know, uh, in line with what we see in well, other Well, countries. it's all work in progress. The challenge we have is voter identity theft. You know, that was why we came with the smart card reader, permanent voter's card, uh, all of those things, and even the beavers. It all has to do with, first, the level of trust deficit that we have, even in the process, and the need for politicians to always cheat. Mm. If you don't take that away, if there, are, there is no way to resolve that, then you keep trying. You keep throwing things. Nowhere in the world where they have surrendered their elections or their leadership recruitment process to technology. Mm. Even here, it is still basically dual. It's dual. That's why you have buy, what you call buy, which is two, mm. buy modal. Mm. Most of what you still impute into the beavers and all of it is still manual. manual. You, the, because the result at the polling unit is collated manually, transmitted, put into electronic, uh, the electronic to be transmitted, take, cutting away that other side that you are talking about. So we, we are testing out different ways of ensuring that we keep those who want to mess up our electoral process you know, away. It can be, it's costly. It's, in, in, like you said, in, other, in the other clients, people vote even before election day. There are people who, I mean, journalists, civil society Foreign folks. Workers. If you try it here, the diaspora thing we are talking about, Nigerians, undocumented Nigerians all over the place. So when we are dealing with our own existential you know, challenges, we need to home grow it in a way that suits the challenges that we face. So many times people say other clients, you know, but here, you, where do you have candidates of a political party by themselves go to snatch ballot box? Mm. Where, do, where have you seen that kind of behavior mm. before? It's only here. There are reports already. You know, the, hum, the Human Rights Commission has a report of people who should be tried. There is a document on electoral offenders mm. that, that, you know, naming and shaming. Well, no, you, you, don't, you don't deal with those issues. So if we are not creating an Electoral Offenses Commission, we can try out things like what you have with the railways. Mm. The railways has railway police, mm. all right? Meaning that crimes committed on the, corridor. on the corridor of the railways is tried in the railway police. Mm. The challenge we have here is that, okay, you are conducting elections in Osho, for instance. Folks are coming from, uh, from Akwa Ibom, from FCT. Immediately after the election, they go away. So even if they make arrests, mm. your prosecutorial um, architecture is one that still has uh, IPO and all of those things. And the, the chap who caught the person has moved back to, he may not be coming back. So all those frustrations, you can have a small unit of police that deals with, you know, um, the issues around. Because when you are dealing with budget issues for INEC, mm. the whole legal department of INEC their budget is what one senior advocate of Nigeria puts in his back pocket. Okay. You just, so you just, you, just touched upon, you just touched on what, what I wanted to, um, the, the next thing I wanted to us to go into, because a lot of people that are arguing against the creation of a separate um, um, commission believe that, okay, right now we are in the process of, um, of improving our electoral system with the introduction of new technologies, trying to make sure that um, the, the process is, is more credible so that it can forestall a lot of all these fallouts, because most of what we're talking about is for out from elections that we feel um, did not go the way that we're supposed to go. So as we are trying to fix that, and instead of creating a separate commission that is just going to be there and um, 
after elections pass and we deal with all these issues, then what happens to them? They wait until the next election cycle before they, before they do anything else. Why not strengthen, just like you said, or, uh, or have something uh, from, from the organizations that we already have, the police and the EFCC, have something that is going to be there to deal with these issues as, as, as a stopgap before we actually get our election proce electoral process to where it's supposed to be? Well, uh, ad hoc, ad, the, 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 the challenge with ad hoc, ad hoc is mm. that um, you, you have no stakeholdership. Okay. You, you, people don't own that process in the way that guarantees what you are talking about. And let's face it, the challenge is that we, have, we, we are supposed to be having elections because we are, you, it's not just the sex mm. should also be responding to the electoral offenders mm. uh, commission. Mm. That's the state's independent electoral commissions organizing local government elections, elections in, yes. in the state. So it's, we, we are a big country. We, we, we need, and, the, the, and as you increase, crime also increases. And the more you in, introduce technology, the more your opponents also study mm. the way to undermine and subvert the whatever it is that you're doing. So mm. at the end of the day, you find out that you need to continue to be innovative. Mm. You know? So that's why perhaps an institution that responds to that. That institution can also inv get involved in research, not just not just um, uh, catching the thief, you know, thing. It can become a, a place where you study, people are studying trends and bringing out innovations that can respond to do these issues. Because as we speak now, there is nowhere that is, that is happening, you know, in terms of... So if you, if you have an agency, the agency may not just be go and catch the thief. It mm -hmm. can do other things. For instance, even the issue of voter education, um, civic education, mm. for instance. You have mindset issues. There is something you said now. W electoral outcomes are for partisans. Mm. You understand? Well, the politicians are interested in who wins. Mm. The truth is that the fact that opposition wins does not guarantee that your election was, the process was... Okay, was I would like yes. you to hold your thought mm. there. Um, I understand we have uh, Barista Cabo back on the line. Barista, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me, Barrister? Very much for uh, coming back. Now, uh, the, the conversation in the studio has largely been one of a support for a commission, clearly um, underlining the fact that INEC is overwhelmed uh, with clearly over 800,000 cases of uh, uh, electoral offense. But the question I am going to pose to you, I mean, and in line with your, your opening submission is, are we always going to be creating new commissions for every new problem we discovered? I mean, the, 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 the road safety came out of that kind of approach. The, the, the EFCC was a product of, of that approach, even though it is kicking against this, as clearly noted uh, in the studio. Uh, is, is this the way to always go, that every time we find a new problem, then we have to create a new bureaucracy to take care of the problem? Yes, it's about leadership, but why is the leadership failing? Why are we having the sort of leadership that we are having? 
it is because our electoral process has not been able to put the credible leadership that we deserve. So coming back to, I do not think it is fair for us to relate what we are talking about to the other. If we can spend money for road safety, if we can spend money for corruption, to the extent that we are establishing uh, commissions to address those areas, I do not think the question will even arise as to why we should be establishing that commission. It is so easy to say, oh, the agencies already have uh, the police, we already have other agencies that um, handle that. I do not think so because the devil is. Let's have a Let's We seem to be having more um, technical issues coming there clearly from the quality of those sounds. Uh, we return to you back um, in the studio for this question. We have seen a, a replica of this commission in places like the Canada um, and other, and other climes. Um, uh, so Nigerians would really like to know. Other than just trying these people, you, you've given another uh, uh, idea into what could also be done, which will be in the area of research, understanding why people go into these things and preventing them on the track. Can you run us through you know, a mental idea of how the structuring of this commission would be essentially? Well, naturally, it will, do, it will have a chairman, secretary, uh, representatives from, the, it's, it's, it's basically going to take the format of the EFCC, you know the AGF, there's a contentious part where the AGF wants, to approve. wants them to report to him, mm -hmm. the same kind of thing you are having. So um, it doesn't go beyond that, it may have a board and all of those things. And then you now have a bureaucracy, um, probably executive secretary and staff and, and all of those things. But see, let's, let's for me, the structure does not, you already, people are calling you, if you, in your opener, people are already calling for a tribunal. So you have a commission, you have a tribunal. You have a code of conduct, do you? You have a code of uh, conduct tribunal. tribunal. You have to run through and find out, like I keep saying, your service delivery outcome. There are, it's not just about creating an institution because we are hung up on that. Mm. You know, there is that, let us create one. The, the, most of the agitations for it is not as altruistic as uh, uh, Sam is talking about, you know, about electoral integrity and all of that. The truth is of the matter is that democracy does not guarantee that the people you elect will be credible. The people who are not credible have a right to put up themselves mm -hmm. for election. election. It is your business mm -hmm. as citizens to say, Eze is credible, he is credible, or he's not credible. I can even purport to be credible before I'm elected. Mm. <laughs> you understand? So we have to divest from, you know, that once you have electoral integrity, your institutions have integrity, that the outcomes you get may. It's to structure in a way that deals with the particular challenge that you are facing. Like I started with, the, what are the frustrations? Mm. We have tried certain things, it's not working. 8,000, you know, electoral offenses. Why do we even... Sometimes in my head, I'm asking, why do we deodorize crimes during election? Mm -hmm. You understand? Why do we make it look like it's different? Slap somebody in this studio, it is battery or assault. Is that not what it's called? Right. So if I slap you during election, then we put pack it aside and say it is electoral. Crime. <laughs> electoral. So it is all those frustrations. Because mentally, we are already there that there are crimes. Whatever is done during election is special. Mm. It, that's the, the ideology that is running through mm. even all of this. Mm. So people are arrested for crimes that are in our laws, clearly. But the, the, everybody thinks that cre election period is a festival. Mm. You know, some think it is the time to make money, including the security agencies themselves. So when you have that kind of mental, mm -hmm. even if you have electoral offenses commission, mm. you are still going to have... So it's complicated, to be honest with you, mm. and there is no straight way to deal with it, mm. in my honest view. Mm. Other than that, yes, you can create this, but what are you going to do 
differently. Otherwise, my brother can be appointed executive secretary and a new power center emerges mm. where politicians now go to settle, mm. you know, exactly. uh, which is what we are dealing with. Mm. So I agree with you, but there is a lot more thinking beyond what is going on that has to, that has to come to it. Mm. Our guess can be that, okay, you can appoint somebody who will, you know, complexion the organization in a way that brings the outcome that we want. But mm. you can also appoint somebody. The appointing institution has a problem. You have not taken away the Minister of Justice Influence. and the attorney. That conversation has been killed, mm. both from the, uh, the 2014 um, um, Electoral National Influence. Confab report that says, look, remove these offices. Uh, the, the, which other one? Um, even the electoral offenses, uh, the electoral, the reform commission of ways, uh, the mm -hmm. senator Namani report, mm -hmm. all is saying get this thing so that you can you can have an attorney general who is inoculated. I mean, who is removed away from uh, partisan mm. considerations. Once these infusions are still there, mm. we are we are going to have the challenge. So I'm I'm not too hung up about whether you set up or you don't set up. I've through your questions, I'm trying to think what possible thing that can happen. But you know what has happened is that once it has gained this traction. kind of traction that mm. you see, once it goes through this first reading, they will set up one. So that's why I'm going ahead and mm. saying, what are we mm. going to do differently? Mm. Otherwise, we will stay in the debate about whether it should be set up. Mm. It's gone beyond us. <laughs> if mm. they have decided to set it up, they will set it up and all our mm. agitations will mean nothing. So it's about that accountability component of it. Mm. How do we make it different from all the 21,000, 17,000 policemen that we put into, you know, securing elections, and yet we are still in that frustrated place where we are that these agitations are continuing. All right, so let's, 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 look, at a different, let's look at a different scenario. Right now we're looking at a situation whereby, all right, we're setting up the commission and how the commission is going to look like and what it's going to do. Let's, let's, let's look at a different one now. In a situation whereby this commission does not come to fruition, for some reason we decided not to set up a new commission, what else can we do? I, I've tried to... Um, think around the possibility of something different. Mm. And, and I was looking at what I think, um, if you go to the airport, you, you don't see policemen, you see aviation security. Mm. They are there. If you commit anything around the corridors of the, air, the airport, they take you to. So if you have, I don't know what to call it, but whatever it is mm. of the, spe of the the this the, a, a special unit election special units within domicile probably within the police that if you are if for instance we are having off circle election in in emo state mm. in 2024 and you are arrested that special unit takes you over irrespective of who arrested you mm. and then can then try you can then you know do that can be a stop gap um, approach. approach so that we can have mm. conclusion because the challenge is not about arrest mm. it's about conclusion no but there is no conclusion people have been arrested you understand even in Ekiti or Shun, people were arrested there was a drama by EFCC in Oshun and Ekiti where they came in with their red team and very few of them and did all of that mm. but the real people who presided over the vote buying. We are the security agents who we are, you, they are looking and asking that you should report, mm. that if you see, you should report to them. Meanwhile, they were there looking at all of it happening. They didn't take anybody. And let me tell you, the architecture of security in Nigeria is, is, is such that for election, you have the soldiers at the outer corridor, mm. you know, manning um, the, the perimeter. The perimeters. Mm. You have 300, meter, 300 uh, meters to the polling unit. You have um, gun welding, you know, security agents. Then at the polling unit, you have the ones who don't have. Now you have the Intelligence Consultative Committee on Election Security that comprises immigration, NDLEA. All of the reason why they put them in that process is that they have something. So those who are taking drugs during election, during election. NDLEA can take them, them away. Up. If people are coming from border, area, immigration can lock them down. 
NSDC can protect government property. So if you interrogate any of these institutions and say, okay, we've had six of circle elections in the last few years, NDLEA, how many officers did you deploy? Mm. How many arrests did you make? In terms of allowances that we are paid to your men, what is the service delivery outcome? <laughs> outcome? That question is not being asked. So the, the, that's why I said we are hung up on this. Mm. If we hold people accountable, mm. NSDC, you are sending people to go and protect government properties. And a place is burnt down or, or, or touched. And then no arrests are made. And then people are supposed to have been deployed. Then there's a challenge with our account accountability mechanism. Mm -hmm. I'm responding to your question. Mm. The other thing we can do is to begin to get interested in holding institutions accountable. accountable. So you don't come to us as civil society and the media mm. and say, hey, we are putting 21,000 people on mm. the ground. When you finish, somebody should invite the, the, the DIG operations and say, okay, you have 21,000 people, what did it mean for us mm. in terms of Yes, you have secured the peace, because that's all they say. Uh, you know, it was so peaceful, nothing happened. But the integrity of the electoral process is diminished hugely when you have these funny, funny infractions. You have voter suppression, where people don't allow, you know, people yeah, to yeah, vote yeah. in places where they are not strong. strong. And then it is presided over by security agents. agents. Everybody sees these things, mm. you know. So until that questioning, Mm. The ability to question, to get these outcomes, comes to place. Mm. Even if we, on the road to setting up this thing, these are the stopgap uh, measures. measures that we can mm. put in place. And it will be helpful. Mm. I have always agitated that the challenge of Nigeria is that the elites of the country don't ask questions. We, we run a complaint industry mm. that mm. is very huge. You know, they rig the election, oh, and then everybody just goes mm. back home. Nobody says, okay, what happened? Mm. Why should this happen? That question, and that's the difference between democracy and dictatorship. It is questioning. Mm. Once we take it out, whether for election or for any other thing, we can't get the outcomes that we're looking for. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Um, according to Mr. Ezenwa, we run a complaint industry that is very huge. What a way to bring this conversation to a close. Uh, but I am sure the conversation is not ending here. We would find time to bring Mr. Ezenwa back as we make progress uh, in the parliament with regards if or when, rather, the Electoral uh, uh, Offenses Commission would come alive. And, and that would include also the presidential assent and whatever modifications we will see uh, as an outcome of this um, public um, uh, outcomes. Um, I mean, public uh, sessions that we saw so many stakeholders offering different perspectives on how they think uh, this commission would serve the purpose for which it was it was intended or it's been uh, conceived. Uh, we want to thank you for allowing us coming to your living room free of charge. I hope we have served you a very interesting conversation this morning uh, to make up for the time and attention that you have paid us. We will continue to do this and we hope that you continue to follow us along the way. I am Sunday Michael Ogo, and it's a pleasure to have you in the studio with us, Mr. Ezenwa. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so very much for having me. All right. So that's been the ride on a daybreak this morning. Let's do it all again tomorrow. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. <laughs>